So some people aren't familiar with the stick drawing of molecules where we'd have carbons and hydrogens attached here and here. I could draw this out for people if that helps. These are my hydrogens. So we can see that this is a carboxylic acid and we have a carboxylic acid in the presence of another molecule that has an alcohol group. And we remember what happens when we have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol together. It's always the hydroxide group from the carboxylic acid that's leaving with the hydrogen from the alcohol to condense or dehydrate to form the water molecule. We can see we have two H's and an O. That's water molecule that's leaving. This is going to form a ester linkage between these two molecules now. So I'll show that. That worked out kind of nicely actually. So can you see how that formed? Okay, just to clarify, the oxygen in my ester linkage here mm -hmm. comes from the alcohol group. We're forming this new molecule. This could proceed in a polymerization because if we had another one of these molecules, I'll copy and paste it somehow. Somewhere. So if we had another one, adjacent one, what would happen to the two functional groups that are right next to each other now? Same thing that happened before, just like how we had the hydroxide group from the carboxylic acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol. These will also condense mm -hmm. and it will form a longer chain and this will propagate and it will happen maybe oh. hundreds of times mm -hmm. or thousands or, or whatever to form really long chains called polymers. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted just to go back to this monomer subunit, is the monomer subunit just one of these or just one of these. So it's actually neither of these. The monomer subunit is the repeating unit that is considered complete or has everything that it needs to form the chain. So we will have repetitions of this molecule. And so that's why we'll name this mm -hmm. as our monomer subunit. To show this proper structure of the monomer subunit, we still have to show it the way it exists in the polymer, which is this Hydrogen from the alcohol leaves, mm -hmm. if this was to react again on the left side. Mm -hmm. And the hydroxide group from the carboxylic acid leaves, okay. as we showed before. These ends, we would imagine, bonded to other things, the rest of the chain. We don't put the R, we just leave it with sticks, mm -hmm. indicating more bonds. And we would put a subscript N to indicate that this is repeating for N number of subunits. If we wanted to draw this in a condensed form, we could see that we have an oxygen on our end here. We have two CH2s. Mm -hmm. I didn't show my H's to save time. Yeah. So CH2, CH2. Then we have two O's. What are these O's? Well, the O's are coming from the ester. It's one way to indicate an ester with our carbonyl carbon from the ester. And then we can see we have two more CH2 groups. And then at the end, we have our carboxylic acid, but we wouldn't show it with the OH. And remember, okay. carboxylic acid is typically shown COOH. Mm -hmm. But now we're just going to show it with the carbonyl group, mm -hmm. CO. And we have n number of these.